So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Simona Utakova, and I'm from the Department of Biotechnology. Um, my task here will be to introduce you to the project we are dealing with right now, which is focused on harvesting of microalgae using electroflocculation method. Uh, we work with uh, microalgae Chlorella vulgaris, uh, which is a phototrophic microalgae with wide range of use in nutrition and healthcare, and also with a huge potential in uh, biofuels production. Uh, it has a unique cell composition. The most valuable uh, products which could be obtained from this algae are proteins, lipids, colorants, or vitamins. Uh, for algae cultivation, we are using few types of devices. For example, these uh, tubular photobioreactors or devices called open ponds. Uh, there is a scheme of whole process, so after cultivation uh, there is a separation step and after, all, uh, after it cells are dried and we are getting the final product, this green powder. Uh, the main problem is that the, uh, the density of biomass after cultivation is really low, it's usually in the range 0.5 to 3 grams per liter. So uh, it was estimated that uh, something about 60% of final cost is just the cost of separation step. So that's the reason why we and many other scientists around the world are trying to develop a new method how to get biomass from the cultivation medium uh, cheaper. So there are a few methods how to make it and uh, our research team are using flocculation methodic. Uh, so the principle of flocculation is forming uh, well sedimentating particles called flocks and they are made from negatively charged algae from the suspense and positively charged flocculant agents. Uh, in our case the flocculant agent is uh, iron cation uh, released by a sacrificial anode to the cultivation media. So the flocks are made and they could sediment quite easy, so they could be separated from the, from the mixture. Uh, first of all, we've tested uh, the most important operating parameters in laboratory scale, for example, the influence of electric current or initial pH of the suspense. Uh, here in this picture, you could see the dif difference. Uh, this is the suspension uh, after cultivation and this is the mixture of cells and cultivation media after electrocoagulation. So you could imagine that it's much easier to obtain biomass from uh, this mixture that, than uh, from the suspension. And the process of electrocoagulation consists of three parts. The first one is electrolysis. Uh, then it's followed by aggregation part in which flocks are made and then in the end it could be separated but some separation method like sedimentation or flotation for example. Uh, yeah, in this graph you could just see the difference uh, in effectivity of separation using sedimentation and electrocoagulation methods uh, in same conditions after 20 minutes. So it's quite significant that electrocoagulation uh, has much higher effectivity. Uh, after testing operating parameters in the laboratory scale, we tried to scale up the process to the pilot scale and we've tested five models of electrocoagulation devices, for example, uh, R8 reactor or uh, fluidified bed reactor. And as the best one, we've chosen uh, this model. It's called continuous flow channel reactor. The principle is still the same, just in bigger scale. So we are pumping algal suspension uh, to the device. And in the beginning, there is the electrolysis part. So the flocculant agents are uh, added into the medium, into the mixture. And then there is a two meters long aggregation part. So the flocks are made here and they could be uh, removed from the media after sedimentation in the last part. This is just a photo from the laboratory. Uh, and efficiency uh, was about 90%, so nowadays we are trying to optimize operating parameters in this device and scale it up more. 
So that was everything from me. Thank you for your attention. And these are my colleagues, so big thanks to them. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. That's yeah, for you. And now it's time for questions. Yeah? Uh, yeah, they, they could uh, flocculate, uh, yeah, sometimes if they are contaminated by some, for example, yeast or molds, uh, which has a positively charged surface, so it's called bioflocculation and they could flocculate. Or, for example, if the pH uh, is higher than approximately 8 or 9, it's called alkali flocculation, so they make flux. Yeah? Uh, usually not. Uh, yeah, there is just kind of problem with electroflocculation because the iron from the electrodes are uh, still in the biomass. So we, uh, the current uh, should be quite low uh, to to have a food grade stability and uh, of the of the final product. So yeah, we we have to be aware of it. Do not use a uh, big current. Yes. So some quest other question? Not so. So I guess there can be some fruitful discussion after the talks. So thank you one yeah, once you. more.